So before we get started, first thing to do would be to talk about tools and you need tools to prune. I like this saw is actually a Fiskar. This is from Home Depot for about $22. It's a very good general purpose saw. Every single time I do a job, tools get sterilized, then they get rinsed and then they get oiled and they get put away. But even more than every job, I will change saws or clean my saws between trees on the same job. You need Clorox or Lysol, or you can make up your own about 10% bleach solution. And you just spray, take a towel. If you have sawdust that's been left in the teeth, you can now carry disease to the next tree, even if you sprayed that down with Clorox. So I wanna take this and remove any bit of frass or sawdust between trees. This is a great saw, by the way. You won't see this at Home Depot, but this is a Jameson. This is a professional uh, pruning saw. It also goes on a pole, which is nice. I don't like to use poles typically. I want to be up in the tree to see my cuts. And this will run you about 40 bucks. If you go to Grangetto's, you can buy it. Most of your work, you know, I trimmed roses and fruit trees yesterday. I spent so much time on my knees. I'm sore today, but at least I have this for a little cushion. This is also another Fiskars. This is great because you can fold it and put it in your pocket. It's really easy to deal with. Felcos, and this is about a size 12. See how much bigger that is than a standard pruner? I can do pretty large cuts, maybe three quarters of an inch with this rather than the standard pruner. If you want to do a standard pruner, you know, just a good quality one with a very sharp blade. And I sharpen blades every day. I just prune so much. I'm just constantly sharpening. So keep a sharp blade. This is nice because I can do bigger cuts with a, a big size of Felcos. And then the other thing is you'll see I have loppers. Don't ever use loppers on your tree. And what? That's what they're for, right? Well, every time you use a pair of loppers on a tree, if it's going to be a final cut, I can guarantee you you're going to tear cambium. So the cambium layer is the very thin layer of bark that surrounds trees. So very often I'll see if people are doing this, they either do kind of twist and, you know, it's like, I can get through that three inch branch. And you twist your pruners, which makes them go out of, of uh, tightness, but also you will tear cambium. What we want is the cleanest cut possible because we want the cambium to cover our wounds and then make a completely integrated surface. And so really, really important. I use these, but I only use them to take down wood. So if I have a big branch I know is gonna come out, sometimes just to lighten it up, I'll hit it with a lopper. But I never make final cuts with a, a pair of loppers. And these are spreaders. We'll take a branch, has a little pointy end here and a pointy end here, and we can take a branch. The tree, I guarantee you what it wants to do, it's grow like this, really kind of vertical. And what we wanna do is take it from a vertical and make it more of an open, bowl shape or a vase shape. And so these will help you. And they come in sizes from this big up through sometimes two and three feet. And we're going to put them between branches to give that shape that we want. Groworganic.com or Peaceful Valley Seed and Farm Supply. And they run, big ones run about $1.50. Uh, smaller ones like this are a dollar a piece. So what we're really after are three kinds of tree trimming. One is a central leader and it tends to be used on pears, on apples, trees. And it's almost what I would describe as a Christmas tree shape. You can kind of have it an apex at the top and then the branches are shorter and then longer and then longer at the bottom. So it's almost a kind of a cone shape. Then we have things like peaches, nectarines, nectoplums. We want what we call an open leader as much as possible. I want it to be like a bowl that's inverted. And I want all of the growths away from the tree. And then you have a modified central leader. A lot of times we'll do that on plums, pluots, trees like that. And you know what we need to do? We just need to work on trees because that'll show you how that all works out. Use one of these products, Dacanil or Liquicop. And that's any, any type of nectarine or peach or nectoplum. It absolutely has to be done because you will get peach leaf curl. So there are certain things in the garden I want to treat before I have a problem. And so Dacanil is a very benign substance, but Liquicop, it's just essentially a copper emulsion in water. And you're gonna spray that on your, your buds of your trees. So I wanna actually spray into the bud so that it penetrates and prevents peach leaf curl, 
bud drop, brown rot. There's a whole list of diseases you're going to fight off with one application, at least one. It's good to do three. This is so benign. This is mineral oil. You can also get canola oil as a horticultural grade of oil spray. And what we want to use this for, and this I do to all the fruit trees. Uh, you can get by with not doing maybe figs and pomegranates. They're so hardy that they don't really need anything and they don't really have many pests. But if you have an apricot, a pluot, a plum, apple, uh, or any of those mixed together, you know, the intergeneric things, you absolutely need to use oil. And this is so benign, do this. You wanna mix this up in a tank sprayer, agitate it all the time because you're constantly needing to mix those oil particles with the water. And then you wanna spray every single square inch of surface of your tree. And the reason we do this is that one particular pest will take out more trees in San Diego than anything else and varieties of borers. And borers are little beetly things that will get into your tree and there's peach twig borers, there are, there's so many new ones. There's new ones coming all the time. So the thing that you wanna do is cover every square inch of your tree. You wanna go from the top all the way down to the bottom of the trunk and absolutely saturate even the trunk where it hits the ground. What this does, it doesn't kill any bugs. You know, if you have borer damage, I can tell you if you've had borer damage, you'll have tiny little balls of sappy stuff that comes out, kind of looks like resin or amber. If you have that, you have borers. And if you let it go, you won't have a tree. It's certified organic. You can put this on and still be an organic farmer. So it hurts nothing, but it gains you a world of coverage and prevention. So spray at least three times during the winter season. And we're not killing any bugs. The borer that caused the damage you see, the little sap that's coming out, that was caused last year. That borer has gone. He's not there anymore, but they've left behind a pinhole another borer can enter and get into. So if you see pinholes already on your tree, knock the sap off so you can tell if you have new damage next time. Spray into those little orifices, you know, that you see little holes and then spray the whole tree. It kills the eggs that have been laid. So what we're really after is preventing next year's damage. The best thing to do is to start spraying as soon as your leaves drop. You know, one of the things that happens in San Diego is that winter often eludes us. And so we think, I've got time, you know, it's only mid-January, third week of January, I'll get it next week or next, oh, well, and then suddenly it's 80, 82 degrees and you've lost it because the tree really goes. If your peach tree or your nectarine tree is completely flowered out, just forget about it, do it next year. If it's completely flowered, if you have a few on the tips that are starting, go ahead and spray it because the benefits outweigh any loss of fruit you're gonna have. I wrote an article, 10 steps to perfect pruning. All pruning is essentially the same, whether it's a rose bush, whether it's an ornamental tree, whether it's uh, a deciduous fruit tree. If you follow those steps, I think you're gonna get 75% of the way there, believe it or not, just intuitively. Which wood you cut off is as important as knowing where to cut and what to cut. If you're cutting the wrong tissues, you're in trouble. So on a peach and a nectarine and a nectoplum, all of your fruit is gonna come from wood that grew this last year. So you look at a tree and you can tell that by mostly coloration. This is new growth. This is new growth. See, it's kind of purplish, has pigment in it. I want things basically under 10 feet because I want to be able to harvest well without bringing the ladder out. But I don't want the darn thing so low. I've seen sometimes peach branches that are coming out like this. That's just too low. Left to their own devices, Trees want to grow like this. How do I want fruit to form? Like that. So the optimal angle for fruit bearing branches, you see how these are like that? 45 to about 60 degrees. So in here. So the first thing I want to do, put gloves on. Boy, pay attention when you're clipping. You should pay attention. Why? Because you could cut the tip of your thumb off for Pete's sake. Is make sure I get all the weeds away. Anything growing below the graft. This part here is rootstock. If you don't cut this off, it will actually dominate and it grows faster than this. The next thing I do is I look for dead wood. This is that first cut. And if you leave cuts, if you have stubs, what happens is you leave an entry point for termites. 
And termites are a real problem for us. And I see termites take out trees all the time. Citrus trees, stone fruits, palms. So look at that, clean cut. So now this will heal. Now what we wanna do is look at it and think, hmm, how about structure? Where's the sun? So one of the things I'm thinking about when I'm looking at a tree is how much of my growth is that way? I want to have balanced growth throughout the whole tree. So one of the things I do with a tree is look and think, okay, where do I want my growths? This growth, I probably want to push a little bit. Not enough that I split it. I wonder where they're spaced. So one of the things you want to avoid are very tight Vs. So we call that a, a bifurcated crotch. So if I let these two grow together, you see how these two are a very tight V? Yeah. And then here's this line that runs right in between that V. One of those two is gonna snap at some point if I leave them both. Of those two, which looks best to you? So if I have a tight place where I can't really get in there very well, sometimes I'll just get stuff out of the way so I can get a clean cut. And we have things called growth collars or growth rings. You can see where branches come out. See how there's like a little line? Yeah. That's one of the most important things you can learn about any kind of pruning is where to make the cut. So I always want to cut on one of these growth colors and hopefully you get all the way through there. So you just, you can use your pruner and actually shave it. Anytime you make a cut, every cut, every time, I want to have just above a bud. So that's really important. Never make a cut halfway between two buds. Use your pruner like an arrow. So every place I make a cut is gonna be a quarter inch above a bud, but always above a bud, but where I cut it is so important because let's just use this like an arrow. If I cut above this bud, where's that going? Inside the tree. If I cut at this bud, it goes here. If I cut at that bud, it goes here. If I cut this bud, it goes there. If I cut this bud, so that's going to be the new direction of growth. Think of a fruit tree like a bicycle wheel. Every bicycle wheel has a hub, right? So all my growths, I want to have from the center of the tree pointing outward, like this. Mm -hmm. What I don't ever want is to see growths growing from the outside to the inside. Mm -hmm. So you see how these are growing to the inside? Yeah. I know I don't want them. Mm -hmm. So that's where I can go, yeah. here's a dead piece. This is growing where? Mm -mm. This is growing inside, gone. This is growing inside, gone. This so is, like this is competing here. See, this is going to, this one is competing. It's going yeah, the same right, angle. Right, right. Bye. Competing. No competing. So the, the next step, if this was an older tree, if branches are crossing to the middle, they come out. I want to have everything go from the center out. Remember, V's are bad. Yeah. So which one of those do I keep? That side. So this one's inside. I don't want the inside. So there we go. This is a really nice growth going this way for me. And I can train that growth. Mm -hmm. uh, this is where a spreader is gonna be necessary. Now look at that. Now you see how that angle has opened that tree up? Yeah. Uh, that's an 18 inch and I have some footers. If you start when your trees are young, it's better. And you can do them with these. So if I have a really big tree, I'm walking around several times. I do a little, I walk, a little, I walk. Take this, it's growing to the middle. This is too far down. So again, if I have downward descending growths, I don't want them. If I have very vertical growths, I don't want them. See how I've now gotten to cambium? There's like a little green donut there, right? That is gonna heal now. So if I have a new growth that starts here, next year, I'm not gonna cut it out. I'm gonna baby it, you know? And if I, if I see one, I may even begin to bend it while it's young. I'll put these spreaders here and I want to have it fill here, here, maybe here, and where else? Here. And I'd love to have some growths here and then later, maybe some growths up here. So I'm trying to eliminate things that are not doing the right thing. And then trust me, coming year, I want to encourage anything that's growing the right way. So these are going to go, we know that, right? Go on. So here's, a you wanna come up and look, oh boy, and there's gopher right up against this tree. Kill every last gopher in your yard. No mercy, they die. See where the kick out, it's like tailings. This is actually below the graft and you see, that's rootstock, it's actually rooting, you see that? So if you don't take those out, you will have little apple trees out here competing with that apple tree. 
So it was left a little long, and do you see how it's not healing? So what I don't want is this vertical. We want to keep that. This is on top. Let's take that out. This needs to be cleaned up. You see how that one healed nicely? That did not. Yeah. This has not healed because it was just cut in the wrong place. So we're going to... Now, do you see how that's green yeah. all the way around? That's going to heal now. Outside, inside, bad. Outside, inside, bad. You see, I'm just kind of doing steps here. Inside, no. Inside, no. This is really competing here, right? Yeah. Of those two, which is better? The outside, bingo. Gone. So that's just above flush. Yeah. See that? So you just want just, like, just, just, like just like a, yeah, and you can see here, that's that growth collar I was talking about, these rings. Yeah. So if you cut it in there, it's going to heal. This, I'm not crazy about. Again, it's on top. I don't like branches on top. So, so you can see, again, what am I after on angle? 45 to 60. What do you think that is? Probably more like 80. I want that. I want that. So if you want to see what borers begin to look like, here's some nascent borer damage. So the copper controls leaf diseases, but the oil takes care of only the borers. What do we want to do first? Anything below that graft? So this is the graft. This is right on the graft, so this is going to be probably fruiting wood, but I don't want it there. This is definitely below. Now, one of the things you can do is look at the difference between these two pieces of wood. Yeah. See how they are so different from each other? Yeah. So this is rootstock, and that is fruiting wood. So I'm going to take that out. And basically, anything bigger than about an inch, I'm using a pruning saw on. I love to do what I call compass setting pruning, where I have one here, one here, one here, one here. This would have been almost perfect had that not been gone. This was pivoted and we'd have two this way. For a, for a plum, that's really nice. But, eh. so this I want to keep. This is the only thing I've got going over here. So I want to definitely hang on to that. See how tight, see, if trees were left to their own devices, they'd be at 80 degrees, especially plums. But I want... Now here, we've got some competing things. I'd almost, that's a little low. Mm. Let's see, for now, I think I'd keep it. I think I'd keep this. this? And that I'd take out, I think. Hmm. Yeah, sometimes, you know, ideally, I don't like this growth at all. If this were last year, I would have cut this out, kept these two, and made, made like a, a four banger, you know, this way. Um, this, I don't know. I'm almost, almost keep that too. Do this. Will you stay there? By, by next season. So the end of this season, I might even move this further out. So I'm going to maybe go a little longer and I'm going to arch that branch a little more this way. This is just where I'm, you know, have to work now. I think I would take this one out because again, what's the rule? Going to the inside. So let's get rid of it. Got that split. So which one? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for the one going that way. And you see how that cut? I'm just above that flush point. But by the way, you've noticed I'm not removing these, even though they're the inside. Why? Because all they're going to do is bear fruit for me. They really won't become big sweeping branches. Branch growth and fruiting spur growth are different. So I'm going to make this a clean cut here. A little bad cut from last year, so let's take it out. Uh, they want to be really tight, really like this. And you absolutely have to open them up. You, you just have to. If you're going to be a true farmer, you, you know, you just can't let them stay tight. All this stuff below is going to be gone. I, I don't want any of this. Peach is open leader, you know, peach, uh, nectarine, nectoplum. And then apples, central leader, essentially, unless they've been altered. And then, like, plums and things are more to, like a modified central leader in the wrong spot. See how this is curling back in? So there's a lot going on here. And again, competition, they're rubbing. Oh, you know something? This has a praying mantis egg case. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it. There's one here. And there's one right there. So I'm not gonna cut that off. They are predator insects, so they will eat bad guys. This I would normally cut off. But because it has a praying mantis egg case, I'm going to leave that. But as soon as the praying mantis egg case is empty, cut it off. But you see, again, what I want to do is get this opened up. 
get that opened up. And spread here. I want this spread there. I want this spread here. And I want that so spread the there. But you really do want to spread. You see how different that character is versus this. I want to manually, unnaturally, just improve nature a little bit. On apples and pears, these little fuzzy things here, these little things, this, that, 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 that. That's where all the fruit is. Hey, we're out of time. Thanks for coming. You've been, you've been so kind. You've been very attentive and patient, and I appreciate you coming. And anytime you have questions, uh, San Diego Gardener, you can post online.